I was so expectant that things were going to be good. And I was going into middle school. <laughs> dun dun dun! Famous last words. The, the, the wonderful junior high years. Flipping through the pages of my old journals With every turn another memory And dusty words bring pictures to my mind I see the marks of the passage of time Hello, hello, hello. I apologize. The lighting is kind of weird. It's late at night. Not late at night. Sorry. It's 8.10 and I'm filming this and I'm drinking a, um, a screwdriver. It's orange juice and vodka because it's 8.10. I don't really drink that much. I haven't, I've had like one drink every couple nights. I used to have like a glass of wine a night or whatever. And I'm just kind of on a break ever since I was on the operation and I couldn't drink at all. I was just kind of like, I'm more productive when I dr don't drink, so I'm taking a break, except for occasional off and on. I always feel like I have to have a drink when I do these, and I didn't want to drink coffee like I normally did, so I was like, well, I'll finish up the vodka. There's only like a drop left and have a screwdriver. Um, anyways, <laughs> welcome to Journaling Through the Years, episode 45. I remember that because the last one, without having to look up, the last one was 44 and I'm 44. Anyways, episode 45, I am Leah and this is a series on this channel where I read through my old journals and I discuss or talk about them, whatever comes up. How are you? <laughs> if you're watching this, comment below how you doing. Let me know. Also, if you're a subscriber, you're watching this as soon as it, I finish like recording it. If you're not a subscriber, you're watching this seven days, or sorry, not a subscriber. If you're a patron, you're watching this as soon as it comes out. But if you're not a patron, you're watching it seven days later. How do you become a patron? Just click that link. www.patreon.com slash cafe girl thriving artists. Okay. And you got a lot of things too, not just this. Podcasts, different kind of web series, all the things. Early access to all of them too, BT dubs. So today we are reading more in the journal from about sixth grade. <sighs> September 4th, 1990. Dear diary, how are you? I'm fine. The diary's like, I'm good too. Today is the first day of school. I'm in the same school as J and B. I will bring you up to date on my life. I am 12. I was born on April 29th, 1978 in 3 in 3:30 a.m. to Do Oops. <laughs> I'll beat that out. To Do to Dr. DHA and MCB. Um and I don't think it was actually 3:30. It was around then. I have this little, like, wooden doll thing that has all my information. Um, I think it's up above in a closet. It has all my information um, from when I was born. And it has the time specifically. And it wasn't, it was around three-ish, somewhere in that time period. I have two brothers and one sister. My oldest brother's name is DNA. He is 21 and is a junior in college at Davis University. Next comes my sister. Her name is JCA. She is 16 and a junior at, it looks weird, a junior in high school. She is a junior in high school. My next brother is DBA. We call it, we will call him, we call him B for short. He is 15 and in 10th grade. I am in sixth grade. My teacher is Mrs. is Ms. Ortega. My aide is Mrs. Peterson, who died about five-ish years ago. Ms. Sagato is our student teacher. J and B go to Geyserville High. I am in Geyserville Middle School. They are in the same school. The elementary school is in the is on the opposite side of town. So the middle school and high school were basically in the same building, kind of divided, like the middle school was over here and high school was over here. And then across town, 
whatever that means in a small town, was the elementary school. And I had graduated fifth grade and was now uh, moved over to the middle school. I was so expectant that things were going to be good. And I was going into middle school. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Famous last words. The, the, the wonderful junior high years. We live in Geyserville, as you might have guessed. Do you know where Geyserville is? You want to go look it up? Stop right now what you're watching. If you don't know where Geyserville is, go look up Geyserville. I'm going to spell it right here. Geyserville, California. Go look it up. Okay, you back? You looked it up? Good. Um, we, uh, we live in Geyserville, as you might have guessed, in an area called the Vineyard Club. Go look that up. Google it. The Vineyard Club. Go Google. I'll wait. Okay. At the club is tennis courts, barbecue, and you can do a lot of things there. You can do a lot of things there. Trust me. In all the years that I lived in that area and grew up, I did a lot of things. As you are learning, as you're reading my diary, you are learning that I did a lot of things through the years. A lot of things. Like things that little kids do and things that not so little kids do. Um, we live right on the lake and we can see people at the club eating. Because there, there was a little clubhouse across from where we were at, like a community clubhouse that people would have like um, like dinners and, and this and that and we used to like club and oh wait so and so my best friends are A D C H Z V and A S the four last ones no the not the four last ones the three last ones live in Climax Michigan where I put four but I meant three where I went to kindergarten. I went to preschool in River Valley, at River Valley Preschool. And it's in Geyserville. It was next to the church. It was behind the church. Basically in the same building as the church. When we moved to Michigan for a year, I was out of preschool. We moved back and I was in first grade. In fourth grade, my birthday, I got a little black kitten. I picked up her brother and he jumped out of my arms. I picked up Jamoka. And she was so sweet. She did. She just kind of stayed there and looked at me. And they were like, there's all these kittens up here. And then there were these two cats, like, down, down below in a, like, bottom shell, bottom area, kind of off by themselves. And I looked down and the brother was, like, black and white. And I was like, oh, he's so cute. And I kind of picked him up and he was like, nope, jump down. And then I kind of looked to this other kitten, his little sister, who was, like, way in the back. And I kind of reached forward and I pulled her out and I held her. And she just looked at me and I was like, this one. <laughs> and she was my Jamoka. I named her Jamoka because the student teacher then, in fourth grade, was reading a book about a boy named Jamoka Jack that drank black coffee, and Jamoka means black. She likes to watch birds outside my window, sleep under my bed, sleep on my bed, and sleep on cer certain places in my way. On my in my way or sleep certain places on my rug, like in my carpet. But anyways, one is under my desk and the other is at the end of my bed. I used to like ADS, but now I think she is a brat. She's still in my life. Like she's on Facebook. She can see this. So I'm not gonna say who. She'll watch and be like, "That's me." Sorry, I was I was 12. So so, so sue me. She is nine. I think her father hates me because he calls me a goat. He was just kidding. And goat now means greatest of all time. So he was calling, telling me I was the greatest of all kind. His mother, her mother is a doll. <laughs> her mother is still alive, I think. She's like, ha I'm a doll. Well, I have to go. Good night. Sincerely, blah, blah, blah. My dad's birthday is, is the 6th. P.S. My dad's birthday is the 6th. He will be 49. P.P.S. See you tomorrow. That's a P.P.S. Like, P.P.S. <laughs> um... Okay, one more. This is on September 5th of the same year. Dear Diary, how are you? I'm mad. The reason I'm mad is because nothing's fair. We're looking at your typical middle schooler now, right? Uh, like the hormones are starting to come out. I'm mad. 
the period's about to come, all that stuff. I want to tell you about my animals. I have two dogs and three cats. Frances is the oldest. She is a Dalmatian and seven years old. She is very fat. It kind of was, but she had two litters of puppies. So there. She was going to the vet on Monday. The other dog is Oliver. He is Francis' son. He is not all Dalmatian. I do not know I do not know what else he is. We call him Ollie. He's very rambunctious. Ollie is too. These are like I love saying these names. These are your childhood pets, so you just love hearing their names and Next comes Puying. She is a female, white, very skinny cat. She is around five or six. We got her when our cat Sweetie was killed. Sweetie was killed. Trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. Sweetie was killed by a neighboring dog who is now gone. Puying stays outside most of the time. Yeah, um, I was in first grade. We had this cat that I named Sweetie. And Sweetie originally, even before that, there was two. Um, we got these two cats, little kittens, sisters. And I named them Sweetie and Toto. And Toto ran off and got lost. And we never saw Toto again. Who knows what happened? I mean, you know, we live in the country. And then Sweetie, a couple years later, had kittens. And we gave all them all of them away, except we couldn't get rid of the little minx cat, little black, black minx cat named Dudley. He wasn't very smart. And then he... Uh, looks like he was gone already at this time. Yeah, he had to be gone. But yeah, he, he disappeared as well at some point. Um, I had a, um, a long history with him. I remember in about first grade, I was supposed to go feed him. And okay, let me, let me finish the story. So Sweetie and, and then there was Dudley. And we had this friends that we're still friends with for years and years. And she was coming over with her young little son that was a baby. And she was bringing her dog, um, Megan, who was friends with our dog, Francis. Friends. Megan was like part pit bull and was always going after Sweetie. And one day, Sweetie fell asleep on the deck. We left her there and went inside, we left the dogs, and Sweet and Megan went over and took care of Sweetie. And it was devastating for everyone, and even especially for the owner, said owner of the dog, who went outside in this white outfit and just like started hitting the dog because she didn't know what to do. So she brought us this cat named Puying that was like half Siamese and not as sweet as Sweetie. You know, you could never replace a cat, but it was it was what she felt like she had to do something for them. Um, I think then they kept Megan for a little while and then sent Megan to uh, someone in the city. I don't think they had her destroyed, but I think they, they took her and sent her in the city and she lived in the city, I guess, somewhere else. Um... And, um, and then Dudley was around for, it was just Dudley or a year or two after that. And I was supposed to feed him and I went out there and my sister said, and I wasn't going right away. Go, go feed Dudley. Dudley just ate outside, like lived outside in like the garage area. Go feed Dudley, go feed Dudley. And I was kind of being lazy about it. And my sister said, if you don't feed Dudley, Dudley's going to shrivel up and die. <laughs> And then I went outside to feed Dudley that same moment, and my brother was going out to get wood for the fire, that was just, and I f was following him out, and I looked to the side, at the side of the house, and there was this piece of log that was all, like, lying there all shriveled, and it looked like Dudley would if he was all shriveled up, and I freaked out, and I went and fed him, and of course Dudley came back, <laughs> and he was, like, eating and everything, but I still had that image in my head of dead Dudley shriveled up. So from that point for years, I couldn't, I just had these visualizations, like these horrors of like small creatures crawling under my bed, crawl all over. And it was Dudley and it was like Dudley, like doing the whole like, um, gremlins thing where he would like multiply, like parts of him would just come out and they just like be smaller and smaller and just different versions all crawling under my bed. And I didn't want to like put my feet under the covers because I didn't want to, um, like, there might be animals down there, like, under my bed, like, or under my covers. It might be Dudley, like, little creatures. This is where I started to become afraid of, like, mice and rats and all this kind of thing from that time period. And then I remember going to therapy and 
talking about how I didn't want to put my feet under the bed and I made up some story. Well, it looked like a ghost because I had white covers at the time. Well, it looked like a ghost. So I didn't want to put my feet under uh, feet under it because it looked like a ghost because I was too embarrassed for some reason or, or worried that maybe I had killed Dudley, even though Dudley had been like alive after that. He eventually did roam away and we never saw him again. Um, but I just, that, that was an interesting, but just, I just realized that that was where my fear of mice came in there. And then like maybe this guilt over, over not feeding this cat that was going to shrivel up and seeing this little tiny thing of log, which it was literally probably just a log. I could have walked over there and seen it, but my sister had put that in my head and it looked like him, like, like lying there, like a cat would lay there with their mouth open, shriveled up. And it was just a, just a log. And my brother even looked over there and he didn't say like, oh, there's Dudley. But I thought he was looking like, oh, you know, oh my God. But he didn't say anything. A gr grown up brain would look or walk over there, but a little kid, and I didn't feel that I could voice myself because I thought, oh my God, I killed Dudley. I killed this cat because I didn't feed him. Anyways. Um... Next is Escher. I spelled it wrong. She's two to three. She stays inside all of the time. She is Dee's cat. Dee couldn't have her at college, so he gave her to me. He did? I think he gave her to us. Jay is my black cat. Jamoka is my black cat. Yeah, he, he didn't give her to me. He gave her to all of us. He just, like, brought her to the house and said, take care of this cat. And then she was like going after all the other cats foods and kind of like being pushy and so we're like hey come and get your cat she's weird and like she would fall off the bed she was all kind of fat and fluffy and she would fall off the bed and go in a circle going wah, 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 wah. and she couldn't control herself she would just go around and around in a circle and she wah, 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 wah. well i gotta go p.s I am mad because I have to play volleyball instead of soccer. Soccer is boring and I'm not good at it. But at least I have played it before. I have played volleyball before in third grade, but I served it an inch. Bye. Okay, so I think the reason I... It seems silly that I was so upset about um, about the volleyball soccer thing, but I was, I was... I have never really been good at sports. You know people there are people that are good at good in sports and people that are not good in sports I'm an active person I like to go hiking I'm a dog walker I like to work out but like when you're in middle school and you're in high school it's like okay especially in America it's very much like you have PE and in PE we do these things it wasn't until I went to high school and I was like can I just go take a dance class at the junior college and get credit that way and not have to take PE because I was so embarrassed of my lack of physical ability and physical education it just goes to show you that I think I don't I may be getting a little better I doubt it but the, the idea that you know public education doesn't really it kind of teaches this like blanket like curriculum like everybody is the same and everybody like everything and we don't all learn the same way we don't all have the same skills and so when you're in middle when I was in middle school and high school trying to like kind of maybe it wouldn't be compete um keep up with everyone and you know you're going through those the social pressures and all of that and it's all new and your hormones and and this and that whereas like elementary school everybody was friends to some extent and then all of a sudden middle school we're in this like hierarchical system of who's popular and who's not and who's and if you're good at sports then you're popular but I wasn't and I just didn't feel comfortable in my own skin to actually do any of that and I was always I've always been a slow runner so that's why I was mad ultimately I think that I was just not able to um to, you know, it's another way that I, I was doing something that was out of my comfort zone that I wasn't comfortable with, that I wasn't, didn't know that if I could actually speak up and say, can I do something else? I did, you know, a few years later when I was in high school, go take dance classes instead at the junior college instead of PE, but it's just, it just speaks to me of another layer of that 
I, I, I can, I'm mad and I can't voice. I don't know how to voice this. I don't know what to do. I feel helpless. So comment down below if you have any crazy stories you want to share from middle school, junior high, uh, about those times of your life where you felt kind of the change of all that and the, the turmoil. And if you have any other, you know, comments, ideas about what I experienced with my, my childhood pets. And we will talk later. And there's a moth right there. Right there. Oh my God, there's a moth right on me. Oh my gosh. Ah! Okay, bye. During the time of which I speak, it was hard to turn the other cheek to the blows of insecurity. Feeding the cancer of my intellect The blood of love soon neglected Lay dying in the strength of its impurity Meanwhile our friends we thought were so together They bowed on and left each other in search of their Sit here in our storm and drink a toast To the slim chance of love's recovery Perfect maps How my life and love would be Not counting the unmarked paths of misdirection My compass, faith and love's perfection I missed a million miles of road I should have seen Meanwhile the friends we thought were so together Left each other one by one on the road to fair weather And we sit here in our storm, drink a toast To the slim chance of love's recovery Love's discovery